from the Computer History Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley. It's the Cube, covering food IT, fork to farm. Brought to you by Western Digital. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Food IT Show at the Computer History Museum uh, here in Mountain View, California. Really an amazing show, 350 people, all, all kind of pieces of the spectrum from academe to technology to startups to Yamaha. Who thought Yamaha was into food tech? I didn't think that. To, to startups, and we're really excited to have two of the partners from the Mixing Bowl and the Better Food Ventures. Uh, Britta uh, Rosenheim and Shauna Day, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, so Jeff. first off, congratulations on the event. What are your impressions? You guys have been doing this for a couple years now, I think. Yeah. Bigger, better, better? No, I think this is great. We've had a fantastic turnout and the, the content's always very interesting and the interaction between the audience and, and the speakers is fantastic, so. Yeah, we just, uh, we just finished up a panel, uh, IOT, Internet of Tomatoes. So uh, there's always some, some great conversations. I think really we're talking going. about that uh, later this afternoon. Oh, fantastic. Right. Yeah. And it is interesting, right, because all the big megatrends of cloud and, and you know, we cover these in tech infrastructure all the time and, and big data and sensors and IOT and drones and these things really all bring, brought, bringing, uh, being brought to bear uh, in agriculture from everything from producing the food to eating the food to the scraps that we don't eat, I guess. Yeah. No, I mean, you're, you're spot on. You know, some of the big macro challenges are what's driving a lot of the innovation. As you said, food scraps, but waste is a major, major challenge. Labor, certainly here in California, is something that we've seen a lot of innovation around solving some of those labor pain points. And certainly, um, sort of environmental sustainability and resource management. You know, how are we using water? How are we using our inputs? Those are a lot of the big themes that are driving interest in the sector and, and driving investment. Right, so you guys are talking about some of the investment side. So you guys put on the show, but you also have an investment arm. So you're looking for new technologies that um, play in this space, correct? Yep, yeah, Butterfood Ventures makes early stage seed investments. So really at, uh, you know, kind of not ideation stage, but um, pretty close after that. So working with entrepreneurs um, and really helping them, uh, you know, nurture them and grow uh, into hopefully successful companies. We've made 12 investments so far. Um, I think seven of them have stepped up to priced equity rounds, so. Yeah. Excellent, and you guys have brought this, this um, architecture landscape of the tech, of the innovation, we won't show this on camera because there's way too many names for you to see, but obviously you can go it's online. It's available for download on our website All at right. mixingbullhub.com. But it's fascinating, I mean there are literally, what, dozen categories and, and many firms within each category per side. So I wonder if you can you know, give us a little bit more color on, on, on this landscape because I had no idea the level of innovation that's happening in the food tech space. You just don't think about it probably if you're not in the industry. I'll let Shauna kick off. Between Shauna and I, we cover uh, fork, to, fork to farm. Yeah. Um, so Shauna covers uh, kind of from the farm all the way through distribution and the area that I focus is on uh, distribution all the way to kind of consumer consumption. And so we have a nice harmony there. So I'll, we'll start at the beginning with Shauna. Looking at <laughs> over 3,000 companies. So the 3,000. 3,000 between the two of our, our sort of databases. Um, my coverage area is really in-field technologies, hardware, software applications. So anything from sensors, drones, soil moisture, um, weather, uh, crop management, farm management software, all the way through to, as Britta said, distribution. So looking at supply chain management, logistics, trading platforms, collaboration platforms. So there's a lot going on. And every time I, I roll out one of these um, technology landscapes, I'm always adding categories, which is sort of representative of the way that the market is evolving. Um, I think there's a lot of interesting stuff happening now in the post-harvest part of this market that more investors are starting to pay attention to. We've heard more of that today's event as well. Um, you know, sort of uh, technologies that are focused on minimizing waste in the in the supply chain, making things more efficient, um, sort of helping uh, shorten that supply chain so that we've got fresher food, uh, more more local pr uh, options for consumers. Um, and I've been tracking the space for the last six or seven years, and to echo uh, Shauna's point on every time you put a new map out, you know, kind of you're thinking about different categories. I mean, I've, every single year you've looked at it, and this, the system, the ecosystem has changed so much in terms of even how you categorize or even think of um, 
the different innovations that are kind of shaping the space. So I focus on, uh, you know, kind of the way I look at my map is from, uh, you know, in-home uh, media consumption, discovery, uh, so media, marketing, uh, advertising, all the way through uh, e-commerce, uh, so both uh, B2B and B2C e-commerce platforms, all the way through restaurant and retail, so grocery, um, delivery, um, you know, lo hyper-local marketing uh, and the like. So can you explain the crazy success of these little short food videos that are just taking the internet by storm? Uh, yeah, it's fascinating, yeah, BuzzFeed's right? You're tasty. right at the end yeah. of, the, uh, of the media consumption. It's really something to see. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Buzz, I think BuzzFeed really took the traditional food media category by surprise. With you know, they really created this new, um, literally, video content for consumption um, that you know is extremely addicting. Short, um, you know, it kind of uh, it makes makes everything seem approachable. You know, it's kind of the bite-sized version of the of the food network. Right. Um, and I'm, yeah, I find myself. Uh, <laughs> the view counts uh, on them are off, are off the chart, right? You can't stop, you can't stop watching it, you know, whether I'll make it or not, you know, right. like the twirling potato and. <laughs> so the other, the sub theme for this year's conference, right, is fork to, to, to farm. And I'm just curious, right, because we've seen consumerization of IT impact all the different industries that we cover. And, you know, the, it is really the end user at the end point that's driving the innovation back upstream. I wonder if you could speak to kind of the acceleration of that trend over time, is it relatively recent, or you know, there's some specific catalysts that you've seen as you studied the market that have really driven an acceleration of that? Do you want to start with consumer and sure. then we can back into the grower side of that? Yeah, I mean, I think you've seen kind of a long evolution since uh, the web, my web grocer Cosmos of you know, kind of 10, 15 years ago, um, and you know, people thinking I'm never going to buy food online. You know, you, there's you really don't have that um, you know, trust level, um, and you know, kind of e-commerce in general, mobile technology in general has kind of changed the consumer's expectation um, and uh, you know, kind of purchase and consumption patterns, period, for all other goods. Um, and so we've gotten to a point where um, there is a level of trust. If, you know, if some, something is going to come to you uh, in the mail, there's just an expected level of trust or you can send it back. And so that's kind of lent itself to this food category. Um, so I think uh, in one way that's been kind of an overall industry shift in terms of, you know, kind of the changing expectations of the consumer. You want to push a button, you can get your shoes, your lipstick, um, you know, your dog toys at a push of a button, why not your food? Um, and so, you know, the problem with that is, you know, food is very different. You know, it's either has to be hot or cold. You have the cold chain, uh, speed, um, you know, the manual labor, labor involved, um, just the, you know, kind of cost infrastructure is uh, totally different than sending, you know, a box of, uh, you know, lipstick and makeup uh, to a consumer. And so I think you've seen a tremendous amount of funding uh, in this, you know, kind of on-demand delivery category, um, a ton of different, you know, kind of Uber for this, Uber for that around the food space, um, you know, meal kits. Um, but I think the reality of running those businesses um, have proven to be very difficult in terms of you know, kind of making the costs uh, work out in terms of a business model. Right. So I was say, don't they all know WebVan failed? They're all too young to probably well, miss the WebVan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that being said, there still is an opportunity there. You just <laughs> right, it's right. about getting to the right scale. Right. Um, and so obviously Amazon just bought Whole Foods last week. Um, you know, I think you know that there is room for uh, a brick and mortar approach here. Um, but there, you know, I think you know on on demand um, and you know delivery is not going away in the food category. Right, so right. who can actually deliver that? Because the, the Consumers are not going to say, "Oh, the business model doesn't make sense. Right. I don't want this anymore." You know, they just don't want to pay for it. So somebody has to figure out a way <laughs> to. Whole, <laughs> oh, that other pesky little <laughs> detail yeah, about yeah. last going to pay. And, and, and Sean, it used to be if we yeah. make it, they will eat, right? I yeah. guess that doesn't hold true anymore. Well, you know, it's a different adoption dynamic in the grower part of you know, the technology um, adoption curve. The consumers tend to, I think, pick things up more quickly than your your traditional ag uh, uh, player, ag stakeholder. The growers have been a little bit more tentative in terms of trying to figure out what kinds of technologies actually work. Um, they're all of a sudden sort of confronted with this idea of data overload. Right. All of a sudden, you know, you go from having no data to more data than you know what to do with, and that's sort of driving some of these these adoption dynamics. You know, people really trying to figure out what works. Um, what business models are sustainable in, in agriculture, I don't mean sustainable from a resource standpoint, but just will that business be around in, right. in six to, to nine to 12 months to support the technology that's in the field. Um, so it's been a little slower, I would say, in the on the production agriculture and, and grower side in terms of, of that um, uptake. But you know, the other challenge that I think we face in terms of those models is really the, f the flow of data, the flow of information is still very siloed. 
And in order to get the kind of decision support tools and the supply chain efficiencies that we're looking for in the food system, we really need to figure out how to um, integrate those data sources better, what's coming out of the field, what's happening in the midstream sort of processing, and then what's happening on the supply chain and logistics side before you get to that consumer who's demanding it, but there's a lot of, a lot of stages of information that need to kind of harmonize before we can really have a, I think, more optimized system. Right, there. and are you seeing within the, in the data side specifically some of the kind of traditional players like Tableau, and you know, there's clearly there's been a lot of activity in big data for a while. We've been going to Hadoop Summit and Hadoop World for, for forever and ever, are, are those people building uh, ag specific solutions or are there new players that really see the specific opportunity in a better position to build you know, the analytics yeah. to enable the, the use of that data? I think the big IT incumbents are looking at this very, very carefully, but there's there are a lot of nuances to agriculture that are are different from some of the other vertical industries. And there's been, um, there's been a lot of uh, observing from the sidelines done there, less, I think, kind of deployment of actual technologies until people really understand how this market is starting to shake out. I think IBM and some of those big tech players are definitely, um, you know, definitely on the, on the fringes here, but you know, I think again, we've got this challenge of how do you actually deliver value to growers? So you've got all this data and you can crunch all this data. How do you, how do you present that information in a way that a grower can make a better decision about their operation? And oh, by the way, does the grower trust that data? And that sort of is a challenge that I think we're still in the early innings in terms of how that, it, it will come, but right, we're still right, in the early right. innings. Which is always the case, right? To go from kind of an intuition, we've always done it this way, you know, my three generations of grandfathers that yeah. have worked this land too. Yeah. You know, here's the data, um, you know, you can micro-optimize for this, that, and the other, and really take a different approach. Right. I'd say one of the challenges, both on the ag side, but also even on the food side, you, there's a lot of startups you meet with that are all about big data, big data, but big data really needs to be big data. Um, so the incumbents are really the only ones that are in the position to crunch that amount of data. You yeah. can't actually get the insights uh, when you don't have scale. And so there's a tremendous amount of companies that um, have a really interesting, innovative uh, approach to collecting data, to how you can use it, um, and all they need is scale. You know, um, But it's it's, that's you know, virtually impossible unless they're acquired uh, by or have a partnership with, which isn't going to happen. Uh, you know, a, a larger in, uh, right. incumbent. So, uh, you know, big data. You really need a, a tremendous amount of data points to actually get to something that's useful. Yeah. All right. Well, Shauna, Britta, thanks yeah. for taking a few minutes again. Where can people go to get? Get the pretty uh, download, it's a Mix, lot of logos on this thing. Mixingbowlhub.com, so that's available, both the ag tech landscape and the food tech landscape. All right, great, and great. again, thanks uh, thanks for inviting us to the show, Thank really you. great show, thanks. and uh, congrats to you both for pulling it off. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks very much. All right, Chief Britta, Sean, I'm Jeff, you're watching theCUBE, we're at Food IT in uh, the Computers Museum in Mountain View, California. We'll be back after this short break, thanks for watching. <laughs>